Okay, we got disclaimer up, and we're just going to do a quick little transition to let everybody know who we are and what we're talking about. All things Grony Geeks pertaining to Star Wars. One of the greatest IPs ever. I would, I would have to agree with that. I am a huge, huge Star Wars fan. So, it's Lord of the Rings and Star Wars are those are my two loves. There we go. So I like having this image window up so that I can pull up any content that we need to address if we need to address. Okay, so welcome back, folks. If you're joining us, you hopefully you saw the previous video. Um, we are doing some behind the scenes spoiler talk. Gag um, after dark. Gag and- after dark for sure. <laughs> Because we are, we are getting it in. We are getting. He it. is getting in. I am. I am getting it in. He is. I, think I have he, water. He has water. I am not drinking water. I am drinking some very force sensitive liquid right here. <laughs> I will be able to. It is distilling your spirits to I make will, you more I will force be able powerful. To pull objects to me here shortly. Um, Whether that be the floor or the toilet, we are not sure. I'm going to force pull something shortly. Whatever it is, oh. we'll find out. <laughs> force so, pull a great video out of our asses. In our, in our previous behind-the-scenes video, we discussed and we talked about... Um, the Mary Sue versus Gary Stu debacle. We did we did touch on... Well, I think I think it's safe to say we focused on the Mary Sue. It ended Mary up Stu. overtaking our genuinely good intentions for discussing The Mandalorian. But with Star Wars, there's so much to cover that... Unless and, you've met another true fan, it is really hard to delve into the semantics and the small minutia points. And I will agree with that wholeheartedly. And I think that one of the great parts about the conversation we just had is while we were debating the uh, the authenticity of Ray and whether or not she is a Mary Sue, one of the outtakes of that or not even outtakes one of the takeaways from that is going to be whether or not luke is in fact a gary stew which is the male version of a mary sue that was what we we kind of tapped on and we ended that conversation discussing boba fett and before we dive into any more ray versus luke conversation i want to take a moment i want to focus on boba fett And I want to start with The Mandalorian, the episode titled The Tragedy, where we see a lot of retcon being done to his character. And it's important to point out that they have done some great strides with Boba Fett in bringing him back into the canonical story he did survive the sarlacc pit let's just throw that out there if you are watching this video hopefully you are aware of this fact um the man otherwise we may post spoilers when we get there (laughs) i mean i'm (laughs) gonna i'm definitely gonna put spoiler tags on these videos when they go up if they go up i'm hoping they do go up um but i do want to point out that this conversation is taking place on what is now december 9th um we started this conversation December 8th. We've gone, it's past midnight where I am. It is close Nearing to midnight. midnight my I was about to say, it's close to midnight where Brent is. So we're technically having this conversation December 8th, December 9th. It's around that era. Um, and this is, we are only up to the episode entitled The Tragedy in The Mandalorian. So we're. The shortest episode of the season. Directed by Robert Rodriguez, who is fantastic at doing action on a low budget. And he did such a great job on this episode because there's so much action. We got a chance to see, um, uh, what's her name? Kassan? I believe it's Kassan. I'm horrible with her name. She does remind me a lot of a certain other character, Zam Wessel from the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole Django, Zam, and a Boba, and... 
Hassan, if that is in fact her name. I'm sorry I butchered her name. I love the actress. She was great in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and every other entity I've seen her in. She's. I was wondering why they had such a high-profile actor for that role. Kind of like I was wondering why they had such a high-profile um, face for the b- red-headed bounty hunter in the episode during season one that they did, who is coming back that they have to... Uh, break out from prison in this next episode I'm assuming they said that's what they need to do we don't know how long that will and that was back. the character um, from Bill Burr yep. the comedian that was a character that he played and he actually did a very good job I, I agree would, I came in with low expectations and I was knocked out of the park on that one but I as agree. with all things Mandalorian and Star Wars IP I came in low expectations after what I saw with prequels and for the new trilogy. And then Dave Filoni and John Favreau have slapped me upside the head and told me this is what the galaxy of far, far away should look like. And I am loving everything they're doing up to this point. Yes. They've, they've done a fantastic job in season two. I mean, season one was just a, it was so much fun and everything it was a good was foundational great. thing, right? Yes, it was it was definitely a good baseline to give you an understanding of the story and how everything works. And when we get to season two, it starts off action right from the jump. And we get some very interesting tidbits along the way. Um, We have discovered the name of the child as Grogu, uh, thanks to the introduction of Ashoka Tano. Rosario Dawson. Um, Rosario Dawson portrayed her. Kudos to her. We, she gets a golf clap for that. Just fantastic portrayal on screen. We only had one dud episode this whole season so far, too. That was it. And it is important to point out that we finally got to see why Boba Fett is the most feared bounty hunter in the galaxy. Um, watching him take out a whole platoon by himself. By himself. I mean, for the longest time, we had heard that Boba Fett was supposed to be that guy, and we never got on movies anyway. I was gonna say we never got to see. There were inferences based upon A New Hope, but as we said last video, unless it's in the movies. And don't if you if you so did not see it, that. and only yeah. because of what Disney did, and and I do want to point out that that is a major factor in the conversations we've been having. Disney took it upon themselves to state that everything that took place outside of the movies is considered legends. If it was not on screen, basically all of the books that you read, all of those fantastic books that were written have been listed as legends and are no longer considered part of the canon. Now, they've pulled from that canon. They have used bits and pieces. Ben some successfully, Solo, some not. The whole idea of the name Ben being the name of the child of the Four Sensitives. Um, ben Solo was originally Ben Skywalker, but now Ben Solo is the child of... Um, Leia Skywalker and Han Solo Um, they got married they had a kid their kid is Ben Solo Ben Solo is Kylo Ren and in the books in Legends that character was the son of Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade and he was Ben Skywalker Um, Han Solo and Leia had twins Jace and Jaina solo. So the trans the transition that they've made with that using part of the Legends Legends catalog. Legend story to flesh out their story is something that has taken place and it is important. I mean they, I thought they did a poor job of it, but I mean yeah, they did touch on that it. wasn't the best transition. I would agree with that. That definitely wasn't the best transition. Um, it made for interesting story points. Um, and just in general, the character 
of Ben Solo is a unique character, to say the least. Moody and flat otherwise. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I like Adam Driver, but I mean, I don't think he was able to shine in the role he was given, as was Poe or Finn or even Ray. So, I mean, but that's a whole other tangent for me. I, I don't want to them... shit can the whole new stuff. I think all of them did as good as was available with what they were given. And Finn should have been given more, which I don't think anybody in their right mind would disagree. I feel like they reacted to the backlash of the Star Wars community that for whatever reason hasn't accepted what year we currently live in and you can coexist with literally anybody. So, I mean, don't be those guys. Yeah. So it's, 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 I don't know. We're going to pull back and we're going to go into Boba Fett because we first must address Boba Fett currently. And then we'll dive back to Boba Fett previously. And it's and it's important to point out that we are talking about very contemporary stories being told and very contemporary scenes being shot compared to scenes that were shot in the late no, that would be early eighties. Oh yeah. It was it was long. And late seventies. So Because Boba was white at the time, but now he's I think Samoan, so I mean something Samoan, happened, or yeah. along the way. I just think it's fantastic that Boba Fett is Aquaman's dad, like that by itself. Tamara yeah, Morrison is the is the actor who's portraying Boba Fett, and it's important to note that he was the actual person who portrayed Jango Fett in the prequels. So, and if you notice the whole little blaster spin around, exactly the same thing Jango did in Attack of the Clones, which I thought was. Beautifully done as well. Shout also, out to Robert Rodriguez again. <laughs> also, I love the direct callback when he said, when Django Fett says, I'm just a man trying to make his way in the universe. In um, Attack of the Clones, I think the exact line was, I'm just a man trying to make my way in the galaxy. Yeah. But. I mean, Galaxy Universe, we're not going to nitpick that. It was a nice callback to that line. Um, <clears throat> we got retconned the association to the Mandalorians. We find out that Jango Fett is, in fact, a Mandalore himself. As he a is foundling? A foundling, yes. He is now He is a foundling. And as a foundling, that makes him legitimate Mandalore. Um, his son... Boba Fett, and I'm air quoting son. Let me because you know his just son, genetically made clone, but unaltered with the aging process is the only way you can address that. Correct. He is in fact a clone, which it just by itself is one of those interesting things where it's like that means that all of the clones look like Django. So that means all of the stormtroopers look like Django, which means all of the stormtroopers look like Boba. But, Although they did go away from the whole clone process due to some defective issues they had later on in the cloning process. The things didn't turn out as good in Kamino. But that's another non-canon story. They did. They did. It was and and again, it's That's how you get stormtroopers with shit aim, but you get, you know, the clone troopers who were just the hoorah unit of the galaxy. They were the badass Marines. But it was also, a, and, and one of the things that I pointed out to the wife as we were talking, we were watching the episode, and I was like, you know, that was one of the things about the clones. They could literally just overwhelm other armies because they were clones. They could just send more. Then they could just keep sending more because the powers that be, i.e. Palpatine, had no respect for life. And he would just continue to send clones out to quell a threat. So we see one ship land and a whole platoon comes out that ship and then moments later another ship lands and just when you look at the number of stormtroopers that were cut down it was like it didn't it didn't have to be that many stormtroopers that died for that because literally Palpatine played both sides so he was literally just throwing away these clones just because he was having this grand puppeteer moment of look what I can do well maybe I can do it bigger next time 
no respect for anybody or anything's lives that were affected along the process. But, you know, Sith Lord is a Sith Lord is a Sith Lord. Palpatine's gonna get his whatever weird kick that it is, in fact. <laughs> so, um... Try not to judge, but... One other thing, I did like seeing the stun gun. That was a callback to A New Hope. The gun that shoots the blue ring that automatically like put someone to sleep they use that on grogu after we see grogu like toss around a few storm tr- he tosses around are we not gonna talk about how he was tapping into the dark side for that oh clearly that was definitely he was force back. choking right, and throwing right along to, yeah right along i was about to say he did the force choke he force choked the two stormtroopers he slammed them into one another he was definitely going dark side with that because that is not the kind of power that a, a Jedi, Jedi would, use. would use like when Rey used her lightning because like that's that's not supposed to be a Jedi lightning is supposed to be like pure Sith but she's just she did that she blew up a ship and that was that weighed heavy on her heart for a while because she was under the impression that she killed Chewie and that kind of that should weigh on her heart if she killed Chewie he's the only one from the originals whose like story has never had to change like all the way throughout the Clone Wars. <laughs> he survived that shit. He survived the Empire. Now he had to deal with the First Order. Like, the man's had a tough-ass life. And, I mean, you know, like, you could say the same for R2 and C-3PO, but they are droids, and therefore... Yeah, C-3PO had a memory wipe, so technically you only got two, but yeah. But R2... R2 has seen some shit. Yeah, R2. <laughs> he just looks at Vader, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> what just happened? It's like, bro, you don't remember me? Really, that's how it's going to be? You're just going to act like you don't know me? Okay. Like, no, you cool. remember the Clone Wars? You remember all those times I no, said your cool. ass? You're not welcome. That's cool. And you know what's crazy? I was actually watching an episode of uh, Clone Wars, and the whole, like, hey, hold this lightsaber and send it to me when I need it took place in the Clone Wars. We saw that again on uh, Job. Jabba ship, yeah, Return of the Jedi, where they have the lightsaber. R two D two shoots the lightsaber out. It gets to Luke. Luke activates it, and he's able to fight his way out. So just when it seems like all hope is lost, he's got his lightsaber back, and that happened with R two D two. And his dad did the same thing years before when they were on the slave planet, and that made for a great episode. And when you saw that in that episode, it was a nice little callback then to Return of the Jedi. Just again. shout out to Dave Filoni again. <clears throat> All the connections. He All connected connections. everything seamlessly. He is the master of this tapestry or this quilt or however you want to say it. It's just Dave Filoni fanboying proudly. I don't. He's done nothing wrong in my eyes. So Dave Filoni gave us what we needed. To make Boba Fett that dude. Dave Filoni and Robert Rodriguez gave us the best on screen depiction of Boba Fett. We saw Boba Fett take out stormtroopers without his armor using one of the uh, sticks that the sand people carry. That's used to actually like clean bantha teeth and whatnot. He used it as a weapon. Um, completely obliterated the side of a stormtrooper's helmet. Like let he me just cracked ask, his damn skull open. What is with stormtrooper armor? Like, what is that armor about? Is I feel it, like it's like X Men armor. It's just like it's there for show, but like you know, more often than it's not, just it's just there to not, make them look uniform. Yeah, just because people love. People that look uniform. They don't like things that look different and stand out. But I mean, if you can have an army, uniform would probably be the way to go, I guess. I feel like the armor serves no purpose. It's basically like putting a water bottle around yourself and be like, yep, this is my armor. Bullet goes right through. You're like, well, shit. What are you going to do at that point? I mean, you know. Yeah, because it only takes one shot. Because, I mean, he cracked it clean open. It wasn't like he just part of the helmet. He cracked the whole side from here up to the temple, just straight open. That dude was definitely done. Cracked another dude's neck clean off. Cause that was a, you heard the snap. 
knew exactly what was transpiring with what Bubba was up to. And then on top of that, he decides to blow up, you know, a uh, tra uh, Empire transporter vessel with his jetpack he just got back. Well, it's not his jetpack. I think it's called a... It was a jetpack. Yeah, no, it's got, it's got that missile. Yeah, he, had the the he had the missile launcher on top he, or the rocket launcher on top. Yeah, first time using it in years, literally just pulls down to fire. And then Mando's like, oh, dude, fucking nice. And then he's like, uh, I was aiming for the other one, <laughs> which was another callback to another episode of Clone Wars. But I mean, that's another topic for another day. We were discussing characters and Ming Na Wen is Fennec Shand. Fennec Shand. Yes. That is her name, Fennec Shand. We saw her in season one. Um, she was on the planet Tatooine. It looked as though she was left for dead. We see at the post credit scene a body come to recover and heal her. That turns out to be Boba Fett. And because he saved her life, she is now in his debt and in his servitude. Uh, she's gone full cyborg. And she now has all robotic intestines to keep her alive. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that when Boba Fett first encounters Mando, he says to him very calmly, I just want the armor. I've been tracking you for a while. I want the armor. Doesn't talk about the child. Doesn't talk about. Mando, he's just like, I want my armor. He knows the whole shtick, but he's just like, dude, give me my armor. I'll leave you alone. I don't want to deal with this. And Mando, of course, then asks about the creed. And Boba says he does not commit his life to anyone. You know what I'm saying? He's like, basically, like, I'm my own person. And you are not going to, like... I know I haven't taken a creed. He doesn't say, no, I haven't taken a creed, but the question comes up whether or not he's taken a creed. He's basically saying, if you're Mandalorian, prove to me this is your armor by saying you took the creed. And Literally pulls up a whole database be like, fuck you, I am the database. And on that database, we've actually had that database. Um, it's been decoded. By several amazing fans. Thank you for whoever did take the time to do this. And we find out through that decoding and through the conversation that Django Fett was in fact a foundling. <clears throat> and as a foundling, that makes him part of Mandalorian culture and thereby canonizing his association to being Mandalorian. And as a direct result of his father being Mandalorian, that makes Boba Fett Mandalorian. Thereby canonizing Django and Boba Fett both actually being Mandalorians. Very And important. clone troopers are now, in fact, Mandalorian clones. Simple as that. you think they would shoot better if that was the case, but oh well. Yeah. Well, Maybe. I said clone troopers and storm troopers. Storm troopers are people, clone troopers were clones. So there, so, there was a small distinction there. That's where that difference comes in. Um... It was really nice to see Boba Fett take out an entire platoon. Um, Something prior to validate to, everything that we had heard but never seen. Prior to that, we were only under the speculation that he was the most feared bounty hunter in the galaxy, simply because obviously the other bounty hunters sucked. Um, Shout out to Bosk. <laughs> <laughs> and... I mean, at that point, wouldn't wouldn't Greedo even get a shout out for a hot second before he shot second? It was, it was Greedo, Bosk, um, IG Eleven, uh, and there was oh, like what, three more. There was one more in picture. Uh, I don't remember his name, and then Boba there when they summoned the bounty hunters, even though Boba had already been contracted for A New Hope. Because he was the one who killed Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, but it's never shown on screen. So again, falls back in that same argument of fill in book or comic or. And in, the biggest argument a lot of people have is if it didn't happen on screen, as at this point, 
for Star Wars specifically. If it didn't happen on screen, it doesn't count. That actually is the biggest argument for canon versus non-canon, given that Disney has turned all of the non-canon elements into legends and do not include a lot of that material as part of their canon. Um, and as a result, it actually retcons and changes the canon story for Luke Skywalker. And that was kind of the conversation we have in earlier. We'll come to that later. Right now, we want to continue to focus on Boba Fett. So give me what you have on Boba Fett. What would you like to point out or address or speak on? Uh, cinematically, we have literally nothing because in the movies, he doesn't do anything successfully. If you want to think about it, he technically captured Han Solo, but Han Solo literally fell in the trap that Vader set, even though Boba Fett did the legwork. And then in, you know, Jabba's Palace, Boba Fett does literally nothing of merit. He gets his ass kicked by Luke. Um, that's And he falls in the Sarlacc pit. That is about the basis of everything that is going on as you slowly drift off into sleep. <laughs> not drifting off to sleep i'm i'm fully aware quite coherent um there might be something that that force juice in my system may have me looking down but i am far from sleep at the moment we are quite good okay just wanted to make sure that you were still with us for the video but yeah boba has nothing movie wise all he has is this what is it like five ten minute excerpt from the mandalorian to prove anything he is done, which isn't even cinematically. It is just live action. And it's important to note that he cleared out an entire platoon by himself. Now, at this point, it, it seems as though um, Mando is about to be overrun and, you know, Finnick is with him. She's being protected by Mando as he has on his best car. And everyone that's shooting, he's just taking shot, 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 shot. She's basically standing behind him, taking out a few here and there. But it looks like they're about to be overrun. And there's a scene just before that where we see Boba taking out a couple of stormtroopers. I think he's fighting like three different stormtroopers. He looks over at the Razor Crest and he sees the door to the Razor Crest is wide open. Now he's already asked for his armor. They've already had like a Mexican standoff, which is very Western of them and so shout out to them again for just keeping their theme um keeps it very western and you know Finnick is making preparations to shoot the child if necessary they then state and this is both now mind you Finnick has agreed she is in debt to boba so she is working for boba doing whatever it is he says to do and he then says that he will agree in exchange for his armor to keep Mando and the child safe in exchange for the armor. Seconds ago, he was threatening the child. Now he's agreeing to keep the child safe in exchange for his armor. So he really has made it clear that all he wants is his armor back. And he's willing to do just about anything just to get it back. And if you've been watching the season, you understand how prevalent the Beskar armor is, how important the Beskar armor is. So it seems like the kind of armor that you are willing to do what needs to be done to keep. Um, That has actually been retconned because at one point, uh, not Mando, but Boba's armor was going to be... Uh, Durasteel. So the fact that it is no longer Durasteel, but it is in fact Beskar, is worth noting. It, that is something to point out. Um, we don't see him have to take as many hits as Mando takes. So while we know it's Beskar, we don't see the evidence of the blaster fire reflecting off of it the same way. Um, if you recall, it also had that green color before, and it seems as though the the helmet still maintains that color, but I feel like the chess piece doesn't quite hold the green the same way. It and, faded a little bit. Yeah, and a couple of episodes before where we see um, 
the uh, the sheriff. sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff guy. What was his name? I completely forgot his name. Cobb. I just referred Cobb, him as Cobb um, Vanth. Yes, I'll take that. It so, sounds close enough. It sounds Star Wars. Cobb Vanth, and that was Timothy Oliphant, who was a hitman. He was, nice little, nice little tidbit there. They have he thrown was in. Hitman, and also uh, just because I'm that guy from movies. He was in Live Free or Die Hard. He was the main villain in that. So anybody who's looking here, I think he, uh, he was also in I Am Number 5. If we want to throw out other small tidbits relating to cinema, you remember the woman that Ahsoka went toe-to-toe with in the episode of Mandalore previously where we learned Grogu's name? Yes. That woman is, I believe, either the daughter or the granddaughter of one of the greatest martial artists in history, Bruce Lee. Though, so she wasn't some random woman that they just pulled off the street. That was one of Bruce Lee's descendants. That is because they wanted uh, someone they could have go and could quote from Filoni that a fan literally tweeted at him was like, "Was this a random woman or what was this?" He's like, "I needed someone to go toe to toe with Ahsoka." And have it be not dragging Ahsoka down, but showing how good this character really was. That would be uh, Diana Lee. Diana Lee Innocento is yeah. who that is. And she was such a badass throughout that whole entire episode. And it was just a Beskar spear for no freaking reason. Yeah, like that's that's pretty rare. Now, there has been talk about the uh, Beskar spear actually being a very special hunting spear it supposedly is the spear of mandalore the great who was the first original mandalorian in legends to be the one who basically got all the mandalorian tribes to actually agree and get along and not kill each other but you know go kill other people so the fact that we've seen this spear prevalent a couple of times now i think it is going to come back up at some point um, because Filoni and Favreau aren't ones just throw away pieces just to throw away pieces. Yeah, like I don't feel like that's going to be a Chekhov's gun kind of situation. I feel like because like when you have the episode, there's the one episode where the spear is going to be the prize. We see the spear used in battle against Ahsoka. And the spear then survived the ship. The spear survived when the Raider Crest got blown up. So I feel like there is a reason we keep seeing the spear the way we keep seeing the spear. And I'm waiting to get more from that. But um, because I mean, what is that damn spear? I know it's made of Beskar, but what the hell is Beskar made of to survive an Imperial blast from orbit that was strong enough to obliterate the Razor Crest, but not even make a dent in that damn spear? Well, just know that when um, when Mando fought Ahsoka Tano, she is dual wielding lightsabers, and he is blocking those attacks with his guards. With his guard, just using his Beskar armor, so lightsabers cannot best Beskar armor on impact. Um. When Eskar versus when Ahsoka, uh, <laughs> when Ahsoka was fighting against the what did they call her? The consulate was it? I believe it was the consulate. I that episode was seen so long ago, even though it was like two weeks ago. This is why we should have done an episode by episode. So I'll take full responsibility that we haven't done anything like this. And again, soon. it just needs to be pointed out for those of you who may not be aware or do not know. The primary reason is when we first started discussing Mandalorian Season 2, there were people who indicated they were going to watch the entire season and try and attempt to binge it. And so we held off. And with streaming services, it's kind of weird because there are some streaming services that give you everything all at once. And then there's others that give you week by week. 
And it kind of seems like it goes episode, well, not episode by episode, but like show by show. They kind of switch it up and change. I'm sorry, I'm taking my shoes off. So that's why I keep disappearing for a second there. Um, Different shows are using different formats. And because everybody doesn't follow the same format, there is a difference in how the content is displayed. And so we wanted to make sure that we gave everybody an opportunity to watch without being without having anything ruined for them because we want to protect the grown a geeks the best we can there was a large enough number of you that did indicate hey i want to binge this so it's like a movie so we get like the whole experience we don't have to wait you know till next week to figure out what happens with such and such character you can find out as soon as you click on the next episode and there was a large enough contingent of you that would said that you wanted to watch it that way. You held off. Next season, we will probably do it differently. Yeah, dep- next season, we're going to have to do just spoiler tags if necessary. We're going to have to go episode by episode because there's going to be so much happening, I'm sure. And honestly, I'm almost at the point where I feel like if we weren't so far into the season, we've only got a couple episodes less, we might as well just go ahead and hold off for the remainder of this season. But starting next season, season three was going to be episode by episode. We're going to talk about it when it comes out, when it happens. And it will be up to you to decide whether you wish to follow or skip it for the season. Um, I mean, is... I feel for like for most popular shows anyway, we could do this but back to the mandalorian was see we so we we have episode 13 or excuse me chapter 13 which is entitled the jedi um that one was of course directed by uh dave filoni it was written by dave filoni as well and the city magistrate magistrate okay magistrate not consulate but the city magistrate morgan elsbeth not elizabeth Morgan Elsbeth, that is, um, she is the actress in this case that uh, Brett was referring to. That is, that is uh, Diana Lee Inosanto, and she is every much the badass that Bruce Lee was, and it shows because. She actually disarms Ahsoka, one of her lightsabers, and she does not go down without a fight. And it is it is worth noting because and- Ahsoka tiptoed around her. She didn't even just go full usual what Snips would do. She literally felt out the whole process like Obi Wan would do, and still almost got bested. She won in the end, but I mean, you know, it's Ahsoka, right? And um. Bruce Lee is, in fact, her godfather, so that is that is pretty big there um, to get someone like that. So it wasn't just a random casting choice. It was a calculated casting choice to get the goddaughter of, of Bruce Lee, and that that is saying something about that. And I did love, in watching that episode, um, seeing Ashoka start off with a standard two-handed stance with lightsabers in front of her. And she was fighting, fighting, fighting. And she was not winning the battle. She had lost one of the lightsabers. And then she flipped her lightsabers and went back to her traditional style. And it was just like a totally different battle when she did that. And that's, you know, just a moment where it tries to show the growth that Ashoka has, where she is trying not to be that impulsive young Padawan. She's a more educated and experienced woman. She's fighting differently now and she's not she's not the same person. We see that growth just in that scene. And so it was a kind of a big deal. And it was still a little bit of fanboying taking place when I saw her whip that lightsaber around and hold it downward as she does. That was like, oh yes. Rosario yes. Dawson doing her homework. I just God, there was so much good stuff in that episode. They even had the whole um, Mexican standoff between Mando and whoever the other gentleman was. I mean, he, I don't think his name was actually dropped out. 
any point in time. He just was a hired gun. Well, that was that was Michael Bean. Okay. And Michael Bean is, in fact, uh, he played Lang. Lang was a hired mercenary who was working for um, Morgan Elsbeth. And he has a conversation, and they do have they do have like a full standoff. Now the Mexican standoff is when there's like three of them there, and that takes place in the episode with Boba Fett. Um, that was what you were telling me about earlier. A more uh, traditional Western style, then. Sorry. Correct. And so when you have the two of them, and they're just kind of like staring at each other, and you see like he's got his hand close, and Lang gets ready to set the gun down, and you thinking that nothing's going to happen, that maybe he's actually going to just like walk away. Because you hear the fighting taking place between Ashoka and Lang, and uh, not Lang, but uh, Elsbeth, and he's listening and he's kind of you know tr- trying to convince Mando that hey, my beef is not with you. I'm hired just like you, and you know you're protecting your person. I'm protecting my person. And then you hear when the uh, st- when the staff gets knocked out of her hands and it hits the ground. That Beskar makes that very distinctive sound. And it, you know, ding, ding, ding. It's kind of rolling on the ground. And at that point, Lang is like, okay, well, it sounds like my my person lost. So I'm going to set this down. He gets rid. I guess it's like some sort of like shotgun type device or well, weapon, shotgun type of weapon. He gets ready to set it down. And you're looking. He had a pistol you know, behind his back. Right. He tried to sneak him. He tried to get a sneak shot. And Mando, and Mando shot too fast. first. Like, Instead of Han shot first, Mando, Mando shot. shot first. Like, we didn't even see Lane get a shot off. So, no just, question. No question of who shot first. That, that didn't even fire the rifle. It didn't even fire the blaster. So, that was beautiful. It was excellent cinematography from top to bottom. I couldn't have been happier with how that episode went out, we discovered, I mean, I could have been happier with the child's name, but I think I'll get over it. I mean, once you say Grogu enough times, you're just kind of like, eh, you can still use Baby Yoda, you can still use the child. I mean, it's really up to the audience member whether you want to use it, because like last episode, we said Mandalorian's name is Din Djarin. How many people do you know actually refer to Mando as Din Djarin? One, and that is only Moff Gideon, who does that in an effort to get him to give up just indicating like hey i know who you are you can't hide from me blah 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 blah. um because moff gideon is that dude john carlo esposito is apparently like one of the best villains you need to have a good tv show you just hire esposito let him just be every bit of esposito that he is oh yeah 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 like it's the same way people used to bring Ludacris on to their rap song as a feature to make the song sell better, that's what you do with Esposito. You bring him onto your TV show to make it better. Um, such a leading man, but every every role he's in, he just, just comes fantastic. off as powerful, intellectual, but also because even in, even in the just- boys. Even in the boys, he's like such a major character in that. And the fact that he's like such a major character in two big shows right now is like so impressive. So, two geek shows, nonetheless. Right. I mean, he could be working his way onto the Mount Rushmore of like geek villains at some point in time if he just adds a third one on there. Because, you know, why not? Because Esposito's still got a couple years left to do some more incredible stuff. I mean, the episode with the officer was also pretty good because we finally got to see what the hell a crate dragon was yeah because i mean prior to um the old republic with revan you just you knew what a crate dragon was but you'd never seen one cinematically done and then you're like yeah that thing ate a sarlacc and in return of the jedi you're like he did what now because the sarlacc pit was like the be all end all monster other than the rancor yeah and and that actually gave some insight as to the plausibility of Boba Fett surviving the Sarlacc pit. Um, he had on his Beskar armor, so he would have been fairly well protected to some degree. And if a crate dragon decided to start munching on the Sarlacc, that would be the you know the the window he would need to actually escape. Because he never survive. actually said how he did escape yeah, in Mandalorian. Yeah, they have actually kind of glossed over that, and not even a, not even 
touched on it. Because, I mean, he, all he said was, do you know what a Sarlacc does to you? And then he left it at that. And I think the only other line that he has was sometimes fate sometimes fate saves the wicked or no sometimes fate saves the wretched um and of course he's making that reference when he's talking about Finnick because he is actually the one who saved Finnick but I think it also applies to the conversation of how Boba Fett is still alive and I think it kind of works both ways and kudos to them for including it the way that they did so that it could be left open for interpretation because Boba, obviously, we all know with what he has done, non-canon, he's done some shit. And then even in Clone Wars, he's done some shit. Even as a kid, he was about that life, Bounty Hunter 101. That was his be-all, end-all. It's like, I want to be like my dad. I want to kill Jedi. I want my revenge. And then to see who he is now, he's easily progress both as a human being and as a bounty hunter because i mean you took out an imperial platoon ship on top of the imperial platoon troopers that they sent down and literally they took one look at him and like nope we're out and they took off and that did them very little good because (laughs) when they decided to run off boba fett used that rocket launcher on his backpack to take out ship two, which then crashed into ship one. And I thought it was kind of, I thought it was a nice little touch when um, Mando like compliments him. It was like, Hey, you know, good shot because that was, that was a feat and it could have gone down in history. And they're such humble individuals. You know, he's like, you know, you know, great shot. He was like, well, I was actually aiming at the other one. And, he would have only taken out one of the two ships, I believe. Had, if he had done the other one. Yeah. If he had hit one the was one. lower than the other. Because one hit the top one. And then kind of left leaned right in the other one. That was slightly below it. And I think it's important to note that if he had hit the one he was aiming for, only one of the ships would have escaped. The other one would have been destroyed. And that by itself would have been a difference in the outcome of that battle. Um the Dark Troopers. We got to see the Dark Troopers in action. Um, they are we are, sold on them as robots? I am convinced that they are. Like, I don't see any evidence to indicate that they are, in fact, cyborgs of any sort. So I do believe they are strictly robots. Um, thought it was I mean, it's reconning another thing from Legends, but I'll totally take it because it makes sense. Clarify. They had very robotic movements, and honestly, I don't see any place where a person could drop in almost like an exoskeleton type situation, saying like Avatar, where a person drops in and then controls the fighting suit from there. Right. It all looks very robotic. Right. I mean, even their movements, and they, they waste no time. They get down there, they land, they look, they grab, they go. They did not waste any time, and, you know, I'm still... <laughs> every blue moon I get taken out of the scene by the technology in the Star Wars world because they have light travel they have light speed travel that's a thing um, and yet anytime you look at a radar or a heads up display it looks very much like something you'd see any place you go with our regular technology that's clearly not as advanced. Not even our regular technology. I believe that, like, you know, if you use a digital locator, if you like, if you golf and you use one of the devices that tells you, like, how far the next hole is from where you are, I don't think that they look as dated as what you see in the. Um, Mandalorian. binoculars in Mandalorian. You know what I'm saying? Like the binoculars in Mandalorian. And then Baby Yoda is like a couple hundred dollars worth of tech that and functions amazingly. By himself. Yeah. And yet they have to maintain the... I won't say practicality, but the the authenticity 
which we all know Filoni is a absolute master of. It's basically like when we watched the original trilogy. That they did was the as, best they could with what they had. That was as far as technology had advanced. When the prequels came out, they had more advanced technology that they were trying to look similar to what we saw in the original trilogy. And yet some of the stuff in the prequels looked like the tech was way better than what they had by Empire. So you're just kind of like... I mean, if nothing else, it just looked better on screen. Yeah, that's true. Heaven and then you get to the new stuff, and you're just like, oh, damn, they were able to put how many thousands of ships like in that end scene for The Last Skywalker? I mean, even go before that, and you look at the prequels. I mean, when Star Wars first came out, our lightsaber battles were Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. Which wasn't a battle, because it was like, what, three minutes? And then Obi-Wan's like, all right, I'm going to be a Force ghost. Then you had Darth Vader and Luke. Which was really good. I really that one was good. Battle. And then you had very the little Jedi. Luke in Return of the Jedi outside of the battle with Vader. That battle, of course, being a big deal because that was the main battle. Father versus son because they finally realized what was at stake. You know, and so it was like that was all we had for the lightsaber. So we were excited and, you know, we saw like Luke lose lightsabers when he was on indoor. He used it a couple of times. He cut this off. He cut that off. He killed the, um, uh, where they cut open a Wampa that was on Hoth. And what was the creature he killed? He he killed a Rancor on Tatooine, but he did that with a rock. No, what was the, in the, Empire, he's in the snow, hanging upside down. That's that's a Wampa. Tom Tom. They also. He, oh um, yeah, he cut open the Tom. He cut open the yeah, Tom. Absolutely. Yeah, my, so my the bad. Wampa is what threw me off. Like, okay, yeah. So they cut open the Tom Tom. They, um, he killed the Wampa. So I mean, like, we've had just a handful of examples of the lightsaber being used. Then you come around to the prequels and like Maul, Obi Wan, and Qui Gon blow the fucking roof off. My God. <laughs> then you get to Attack of the Clones and what? Dooku, Yoda, Dooku, Anakin, and then Yoda's just flipping. You're just, what? This can happen? Watching that, and it's like, okay, why do you carry the cane and walk the way you walk if you can move like that with the lightsaber? I need I like you. He to... just saves it for special occasions type shit. Like he just wants to show off at parties. He's hitting you with shit. that Master Roshi. Yeah. You sleep on the character, and the next thing, oh, you can do some things. Right. And then, I mean, the battle between Anakin and Obi-Wan and Revenge of the Sith and Sidious versus Yoda showed what force powers could actually do when they were properly utilized in a movie. Because prior to that Yoda-Sidious battle, force powers were like a nice thing. You get a force push here, a force pull there, maybe a little lightning Jedi here mind there. trick. But then they're literally hurling things at each other, absorbing force, lightning, redirecting it back. I mean, they went full mind-blowing stuff right there. And I will say that the new trilogy had a lot of nice force additions in it. I didn't like how it was portrayed, but that's my problem, not theirs. But also the new trilogy did... They gave us enough in terms of lightsaber battles... Because the battle on Snoke's ship, or in in Snoke's chamber, or whatever the, that was, the Last Jedi, yeah, Rian Johnson actually did. That was something, but I mean, I feel like Phantom Menace's fight was better than that one. But that that Qui Gon and Obi Wan, Qui Gon, Obi Wan, and Maul. Nah. But that, that is also very open to user interpretation because some people like the Luke versus Vader fight over that, even though choreography wise, some fights were just. I'm going to say, in terms great. of choreography, well, in terms of story, I like the Qui Gon Maul fight. 
where Obi Wan yeets the but high in ground. In terms of cinematography, I definitely like the battle on the Last Jedi. That was a nice one. Revenge of the Sith cinematography between Anakin and Obi Wan were also pretty up there. That yeah. is that is still without a doubt my number one. Although I didn't need to do with the whole behind the back spinning thing where they were just standing in front of each other like almost nose to nose just spinning around not touching each other but i mean it was cool it was cool like if you could you know it, what you know what that it. scene you know what that scene did for me what it showed me the i don't want to use this word i'm going to use the long form of this it showed me that they were on the same level at it, that time, it was pretty dang close. Yeah, and see, and that's the thing. Like, obviously, the only time that An- Anakin is ever higher than Obi Wan in the trilogies is when he taps into the Force of being the One. Like, literally, destiny calls him, and it's in the book, which is for the movie. It's literally shot by shot. It's literally verbatim what happens. So, so it happened. Does it happen in the movie? It's the book that transpired in the movie, and they don't say what happened, but it's Anakin taps into literally the entity of the Force. He becomes one with the force at the moment he slaughters Dooku because you know he was getting wrecked and the next thing you know he's like ha ha got your hands oh wait I got two lightsabers at your throat what you gonna do punk and then obviously you know beheads his ass so so that that scene only that scene other than that so they wait, are wait 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 no no because I just want to make sure I understand because like that is that is that is telling me something because I recall watching where that fight is taking place and he he like takes out Obi Wan really quickly, because Obi Wan is always like Sith Lords are a speciality, and there's just scene after scene of Obi Wan just getting thrown around by Dooku. He's just ragdolled. Then Darth Maul throws him around, but then you know you get to Clone Wars, and then everything's finally put back into its proper place because Obi Wan's no punk, no punk at all. I mean Obi Wan, y'all know like if you don't know, let me be the one to say it on film here, like. Obi Wan is my dude, like of the entire. That's why I'm not throwing flack. No, 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 and it's Obi-Wan cool. It's cool too. if you do because Obi Wan has. He ain't like he's. He doesn't my have the favorite. movie credentials. <laughs> he's my favorite, but he's also a lot of the blame. Like I make no hesitation to state he's a lot of the blame, and that's why I wanted to say that when you see the scene you were talking about. Where they're just standing in front of each other, and they're you know because it's it's important to know, and of course this gets into the real geeky aspect of Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? They use different lightsaber styles. You know what I'm saying? And the lightsaber style that Obi Wan uses versus the lightsaber style that Anakin uses is one of those things where you talk about. It's either Ataru or Saresu would be the is a better, ones. which is better, a good offense or a good defense. Because Obi Wan is a master in defense, defense, and he's very good at offense as well. He's not a slouch by any means. He's one of the best Jedi masters at that time, force wielding like with a lightsaber wise. Windu was the pinnacle, and Obi Wan is a master of defensive tactics when it comes to his lightsaber. Like he is not one to be aggressive and go on the attack, rather allow you to attack and simply counter and best you as a result. Anakin is second to overpower you. Right. Now, Anakin, of course, you know, they said that, you know, it's, he believes, of course, he believes that he is second only to Master Yoda. In terms of everything, which is a ridiculous statement. I mean, it's a little arrogant, but, you know, he's that, he, he is, that chosen one, so why wouldn't he feel like he's got that connection? But, you know, he's also, like, kind of said that when it comes to the lightsaber, he feels like the only person that can beat him is, in fact, Yoda. Um, and that's just, like, completely discrediting what Windu could do to him. Because Windu would slice him up for breakfast and call it a day. But the fact remains, it comes down to there are many different forms of Jedi fighting styles. And because Mace Windu's uh, the only one that uses his force style too. Samuel L. Jackson asked for his own force style of fighting. 
called Vapad, and he was the only one allowed to use it. <laughs> and they it said other people have tapped into it, but none have mastered it. That stayed as a Jedi because they go to the the dark side of the Force after using it. And it is just one of those things where it's like, again, I say it comes down to which is better, a good defense or a good offense. And if you have a strong offense, could a strong offense beat a strong defense? Um, you know, and that's that's going to be up for debate indefinitely as long as sports are a thing uh, because – you could probably watch an episode or two of gag on these balls with our host Brent here. And he could probably, you know, pick that apart. And you could talk about how some of the different defenses, like if the, if this team's offense could beat this team's defense, like the 2007 Patriots versus the 1985 bears, or as Tony would say, the 77 Atlanta Falcons. There you go. And that's a prime example, you know what I'm saying? When you when you make the comparison between which is stronger, and I believe that scene where they are fighting and their lightsabers are simply flowing in front of them, and because it, they do that, they do that, they do that, they they strike sabers for a second, they pull sabers back, and then they immediately go into a force push, and they're both like kind of standing there, just blocking each other's force push, and they're just you know, that tension between them. That is just one of those moments where I think it really sh- it really shines and highlights that they are on equal footing. At that point, they are, there's not, one is not better than the other. Which is ridiculous considering Anakin literally became a Sith like four hours prior. But it gave him that extra power. Yeah, because he was able to finally tap into all his emotions. And as we know, the Skywalkers are an emotional ass bunch. A lot of power in those fillings. Yeah. All so, that M count. Um, Back to the Mandalorian. Was there anything else? I mean, I really like the touch that they had with the sign language for the Tusken Raiders. That was one of the extras comment. He was like, hey, maybe we should do this so we can acknowledge that community of people and make sure that they get the recognition that they deserve and see so they can have something that they too can enjoy so they went and did that but that was a beautiful beautiful touch um, it's always nice when your directors are receptive to new ideas that are not oh yeah over. especially when they're open to it and they and they receive it and move on it not you know it's one thing to just talk about it and like oh it'd be cool if we did this but to actually make it a reality happen to do it and and put it out there and make it make it a thing um we did mention all of the oof, we did mention all of the potential candidates of people who would have been contacted by grogu when he mm-hmm. sat on the seeing stone um We've already addressed that, so I won't go much into that. I do want to point out again, for those of you who are not aware, do some research into blue butterflies. Blue butterflies and their force presence. Relation to Ben Solo. Yeah, so that's that's something very interesting. And the fact that that was so prevalent and shown. I missed that the first time I watched it. I didn't read anything into it. I thought that was just a random ass butterfly. And but if you look, and it's very important to note that when he first sets him on the seeing stone, a few moments later, you know, you see the butterfly. And of course initially I thought he was just gonna eat the butterfly. But if you look in the background, you see the one butterfly that he's reaching out to, and you see like three other butterflies in the background. And then when they cut that one scene away, you look again and there's like nine or ten butterflies floating around. And it that's kind of what really made me pay attention to that and look a little more into that. The connection that's there with the blue butterflies is so fascinating that I don't, I, like, I'm just going to say go and read into that. And then that brings up another thing I wanted to say. Um, 
You remember the moth cats from Rebels? Yeah. The little cat-like creatures were on whatever planet that Ezra mm -hmm. native to. I don't remember the name at this time, but like literally one is shown in the background of the episode with the magistrate, you said? Yeah. Because it's one is just running around in the alley, and then you see um, Ahsoka in the same general area. You're just kind of like, if this is not Dave Filoni showing every little piece of thing that he's done behind the scenes that not every Star Wars fan is prevy to, because some have tapped into it, some haven't, some refuse to watch it because it is, in fact, it is a kid's show, but it is pertaining to Star Wars, so therefore... I would not. I, I, I would argue that it is animated, but I would not say it's a kid's show. There I are think, some adult elements. I, I say. think to say it's a kid show trivializes the story that's being told. I think the fact that it is animated is the issue for some people, as they automatically associate animated with kid show. So, okay, Star Wars Resistance <laughs> is for kids. Star Wars Rebels and Clone Wars are animated. And if you decide to research and deep dive into Clone Wars, know that there is first the Clone Wars movie. Star that Wars would be Clone Wars. That is movie. After movie, you get into the Clone Wars TV series. And the TV series, while connected, is still separate. Um, the art style changes a little bit and things like that and there was the first episodic portion of clone wars which was um came on cartoon network and they had a host of guest art directors and things like that and gindy Tar tartavoski who did samurai jack and primal on cartoon network handled the um, it's the called the Clone Wars the mini series. That's how the okay. fans refer to it. Clone Wars the mini series, and this is not to be confused with Star Wars Attack of the Clones, because there is a period between Attack of the Clones and Retur Revenge of the Sith that take place, and most of these events take place in that time period. Like a lot of shit happens between those movies, just so everyone is fully aware. Like, Anakin is able to conquer the galaxy and knock up Padme between two and three. And he does a whole lot of other stuff with Obi-Wan and Snips and all them. So, And you know what? You get all these other characters aside. Ventress. Um, Wat Tambor. Dooku gets some respect on his name. Um, the the of return stuff. of... This technically, Darth Maul. I was about to say this is the technically the return of Darth Maul. Um, you get you get Sabash. more Maul when you get to Rebels, which takes place in a different time period. So don't be confused by that. But that's just older Maul, who's just literally on the brink of losing what whatever, whatever sanity is left, and they milked him for whatever money they could. Right. Because whenever Maul shows up, fanboys show up. It is one of those things because. The first time in theaters, I did lose my damn mind when he held up, you know, the lightsaber goes one end. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, everyone does that. Right out the other end. Just, oh. Oh, yeah, that was. Those can do that. That was impressive. <laughs> and truthfully, as I'm sure many of you fans know, that was actually the first time we had seen a dual-sided lightsaber. Oh, it's great. Period. Yeah, that that was it. Because I mean, Bastila Sean was doing it, but that was shortly after. Was it? Was it? Period. When did Phantom? When did F Phantom came out in the late nineteen nineties? I was little, little. I was like six, seven at the time. So of course that makes me say like, oh, okay. So wait. So when did? I think Attack of the Clones was like two thousand. No, no, no. When did? When did? Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I thought that was two thousand. Four, I want to say, because that came out for the Xbox original. So I thought that one was an Xbox exclusive. Before, you know, the exclusive thing really became a huge thing. 
Okay, so we got 1999 oh. film Phantom Menace. Because I want to say that if you have not played Knights of the Old Republic in any way, shape, or form, you are doing yourself a huge disservice. Fantastic game. Knights of the Old Republic 03. So, yeah, that may actually be the first time we had a dual-bladed lightsaber. Because prior to Knights of the Old Republic, there wouldn't have been anything else that would have had a dual-bladed lightsaber. And it was nice that Maul did all his own stunts. The actor Ray Ray Park. Park who is no longer allowed to be associated with the character. Him and uh, Disney had a huge falling out. <laughs> no, Ray Park had a huge falling out in general. <laughs> yeah, he did. Because we'll I love me some Ray Park, and then he did what he did. I'm we'll like, just oh. throw that on him. And it's also, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because he was also Steak Eyes. Ray Park, has, Ray Park has cemented a handful of the physical Iconic roles. martial arts characters that you have seen on screen, whether you know it or not. Like if you even if you go back to like like he's not one, but just to give you an idea, like remember when people had to be in the costumes for the Ninja Turtles? Ray Park has been around for stuff like that. You know, like I feel like Ray Park would be an excellent Scorpion if he hadn't, you know, had a falling out, you know. And I'm talking Mortal Kombat universe. Obviously, I'm sure you picked that up, but I feel like he would have been like excellent in that role. But you know, Ray Park, Ray Park. So I was a huge fan. And he can still do all the stunts to this day because he's still invited out every once in a while to cons and someone tossed him a dual bladed lightsaber. like, I bet you can't still do the whole spin twirl behind the back. And he did it like with a twist on top of it. Like exactly oh, yeah. as it, it was, was shown it in was theaters. You're just nothing like, oh. for him. Yeah. It was nothing for him. He's just one of those dudes. Oh. Um, you you say Mortal Kombat? It is worth noting that he was Raptor. Oh, so at least he had a part in that universe. Because I feel like Raptor. if there's a way to use someone who's good at acting wise as well as doing the actual martial arts physical stunt work of it, he was Snake that would Eyes. Be the guy. He was also Snake Eyes. Uh, he played Chuck Norris in the Legend of Bruce Lee the TV series. Um. And those are the only noticeable references. I mean, yeah, because he fell off a cliff afterwards. Yeah, he's got a handful of references. I mean, a handful of like scenes and movies and stuff out there. Um, he's been getting work. Don't get it twisted. But the big, the big ones were obviously Darth Maul. Uh, he was in Sleepy Hollow. He was actually the headless horseman. He was the physical actor who portrayed the headless horseman when Christopher Walken did not have speaking lines. Um, and I did. think he fell out of favor with Star Wars fans. Well, not Star Wars fans, Star Wars from Disney more or less when he wasn't the one shown for the solo movie. That was a different actor, I believe. And he was kind of upset about that. Yeah, I mean, rightfully so, but you know, he's like, "I'm that dude. I'm still alive. Why are you not? Why aren't using? Why aren't using me?" But also that, don't watch a solo story. Just don't watch it. Great cast, horrible movie. Yeah, two things. Two things worth noting. He did get nominated for the MTV Movie Awards Best Villain as Darth Maul, and the MTV Movie Awards Best Fight. Also, Duel the Fates. were Liam Neeson and uh, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Obi not gonna disrespect your, we're not going to disrespect your boy like that. Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi. You know, who's getting his own mini series? It starts filming in January. It's literally one month away in Boston, UK. Because apparently, people were thinking Boston, Massachusetts, which makes absolutely no sense unless it was like a soundstage. So I was gonna say, like, there's nothing in Boston I would consider Star Wars thematic, but I mean, I could be wrong. Galaxy far, far away. Everyone could have a weird accent for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could just finally end up on that planet. Why not? There's so many planets out there. End up on Earth, and then they just have to fight the Boston Red Sox. That is the ultimate ending. If they're in Boston, would they be? Able to, no, they wouldn't be able to see the statue. I was like, oh, they did it. You finally did it. They just saw the blown up Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or better yet, like incorporate space balls and show like the lawn, uh, not the lawnmower, but the uh, vacuum cleaner. <laughs> that would be great. A nice little homage to one of the best parodies ever made, period. <laughs> Mel Brooks, Spaceballs. Enjoyed it. May the Schwartz be with you. So, um, yeah, I think we've hit all the key points that we needed to hit this go round. So if we decided at this point to like dive into anything specific that we wanted to, like, I don't know, Luke Skywalker versus Boba Fett. If we wanted to touch if on Luke that. took out Boba, I, I prefer, I think you're talking about Ray. Ray Pelton. No, 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 no. Because you wanted to talk about how Luke took out Boba. Luke did take out Boba. I, want to, I said in the last video, which we'll have to come back and look at, that Boba would body Ray. Like it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a fight. It wouldn't be a moment. Boba would be in, out, done, based upon his legends. If it's canon, Ray wins. I mean, she literally force lightning. Like, what's Boba going to do to force lightning? I was, I was about to say, he's so gonna, are we talking about, now, based on that statement, are we talking about the Force Awakens Ray, or are we talking about the Rise oh, of Force Skywalker? Awakens, Ray, Ray gets bodied by everybody. But if you're talking about, like, the Last Jedi and or the Rise of Skywalker. The Rise Skywalker, like she could put some hands on a couple people. She, their power scaling and definitely. Do you, up do in you that feel way. like she could put hands on Boba? She could put hands on Boba at that point in time if we're not including canon. I mean, non-canon legends. That would be a good fight, though. I would really love to ask Jeffrey okay. on that one because we both love our characters. Okay. And I don't think now would be a good time to start a whole another tangent. We are, no, and we, and we won't, one, and like, we won't we, start a whole another tangent. And the only and the only thing that I want to clarify here is Ray is considered a Mary Sue as a result of her screwy writing. Luke is not considered a Gary Stu, but has the benefit of, of good writing. Uh, not of good writing, because if you just go by the three movies, he does not have the writing. Ooh, every the George Lucas like that? Every Listen, yeah. every yeah. defense you have of Luke Skywalker comes from something that is no longer canon. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. I would love to, but I don't have the empirical evidence to back up my statement. Tell me I'm wrong. It it comes down to because we fully agree on that statement. And and I I cannot say enough that if we compare if and, and again, if we just compare, just compare movie to movie, a new hope to the Force Awakens. We have a Mary Sue and a Mary Stu. Or we have two force sensitives coming into their own. It's one or the other. It can't be both. You cannot give a pass to Luke if you don't give a pass to Ray. Or I'm willing to accept that Ray is a Mary Sue so long as you recognize Luke as a Gary Stu. If you for that take, one movie. If you go movie to movie, The Force Awakens versus A New Hope. Movie to movie. And we are not talking about not Nam book, no video, no side. I'm talking bar. trilogy to trilogy. Even if you go now, when you say trilogy to trilogy, are you sure that you mean movie to movie because I've already I know yeah we've we've dealt with it. There's a large gray area we have completely conceded that legends should not be part of your thesis argument. It should not be allowed even in the have a day in the discussion. Now is that accurate? That that is accurate in the in the conversation of depicting Ray trilogy, as a trilogy. Mary Sue Versus not considering Luke a Mary, uh, Gary Stu. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. While I have no problem with the feats and the accomplishments, 
that Luke Skywalker has in his three movie arc. You cannot just look at those three movies and justify what has taken place. You can't if just you, use those if you three meant movies. justify in terms of actual training. I can believe that argument if you're just if we don't include the force and just, you know, M count and all that. Blah, blah, and that if that. we just look at the three movies, what they have in the three movies and compare it one to the other. Here's what I'm going to here's what's going to ruin this for you. When you go from episode five to episode six, there is nothing. There is a gray area. There is a question mark as to Luke's training at that time. There is no training at that time. He would be, you would have hit that nail absolutely on the head because he hadn't had contact with Ben till he basically passes out in the middle of Hoth. Because you know he's staring out in that winter storm or blizzard. No, 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 or whatever, no, 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 no. And then no, he's like then, Ben, and he, there's sorry. no training there. There's what did, nothing. What there. did I? What did I say? Because I maybe I maybe I misspoke. Between five and six. Oh no, five and six. You are completely correct. Okay, sorry. I was like, did sorry, I misspeak. Yeah. Okay. No, not, not four <laughs> through five. I misunderstood. Okay, That's yeah. Entirely on me. I've been drinking water, folks. I have so, no <laughs> nothing to hide behind. <laughs> that was just a pure that, mistake. That's some strong water you got over there. Was is that Voss? Is that, is that what you're drinking? You're drinking Voss water? Like, what's uh, happening? Straight straight bottle water over here. Like, okay, I don't. Okay. I have no reason to be tripping the way I am. It may be 12.30 at night, but it's 3.30 for you. There's no handicap here. So. That's my mistake. When you go, because again, and I, and I just want to point this out, as I've said, I, if anybody watches the last video, they hear me saying it here now, they heard me say it there then. At the end of Empire, Luke is staring out the window, missing a hand. When we start Return of the Jedi... He comes back in all black. Now, I'm not going to say that he did not train during that time. What I'm saying is that there is no evidence to indicate that he trained with Yoda. There is nothing in the movies that indicate he trained with Yoda during that time. Nothing in the movies. Nothing in the movies. Now, because there's nothing in the movies that indicate he trained with Yoda at that time, I don't object to the idea that he went out and he trained on his own, that he went out and he just practiced with his saber and he worked on the force, the force, because he spent that time with Yoda in Dagobah before he went to Cloud City. Because he had to have been doing something while everyone else was planning their whole espionage to re- rescue Han. Otherwise, he would have just gone in the first place. They wouldn't have needed Lando in the back. They wouldn't have needed Leia in costume. And then, so he the had to get himself ready. He had to be comfortable outfit. in doing what he was planning to do, right? So he went out and he practiced. Now, because he had those couple of days with Yoda, Yoda gave him the basics. Yoda showed him, like you know, like I can lift your X-wing out the water. All it takes is focus and training. He kind of believed it because he was starting to see some evidence of it. And he knew that it was real, but he didn't think that he was strong enough. And then he watched Yoda do it. And he was like, okay, well, maybe I am strong enough. So he took that and took that upon himself to go out and train and practice and figure it out and learn it. Now, he'd already done a lightsaber pull. He'd already lifted up some rocks. He'd already done the one hand handstand upside down, but he couldn't do anything like lift lifting an X wing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that he was a scrub by any means. I'm just saying he wasn't up to that level. So it is not out of the realm of possibility to say that he took what little knowledge he had and tried to expand upon that and took it upon himself to go and train and learn and get better. Now, he went out, he practiced on his own, he mastered those techniques that he could. He had seen Obi-Wan do a Jedi mind trick. 
and he attempted it on a race that you can't actually do that with. Because the huts are tech are well not technically, they are impervious to mind tricks, like uh Troidarians. The only thing they give shit about is money. That like you can't so, just He's been practicing, working on this, working on that. He has seen the Jedi mind trick, so he knows that that's something that can be done. So he goes out into the woods, whatever he practices. He comes back. He's got the all black outfit. He's like, you know what? I'm a Jedi Knight. and I'm back in black. No one can tell me that I'm not because who's going to tell me that I'm not? Can't nobody do what I can do. I mean, think about it. Like, can't nobody do what I can do, so I must be a Jedi Knight. He takes upon himself to call himself a Jedi Knight. He is self proclaimed Jedi Knight. He, he's just like, that's what it's going to be. You have all of the stuff that happens there. He fights Boba Fett, and it was like he blocked a couple of blasters. He cut down the little wire that was supposed to tie him up. And at some point, somebody shoots something and it shoots a jetpack and Boba Fett slams into the side and he falls into the Sarlacc pit. I'm not going to give Luke credit for that kill. Well, non-kill now that we know, but I mean, yeah. At that time, that baseball. At that time. Like, well, even then, I can't give Luke credit for that. That was circumstantial. It just happened to play out that way. It was plot written. There's nothing that could have been changed. Right. But I don't, stone. I don't give Luke credit for that. Okay. Now, I can see that. I can see that. Now, after that battle, he decides to hop in his X-Wing. He's going to go back to Dagobah. He goes back to Dagobah, and in Dagobah, Yoda's like, it ain't really nothing else for me to tell you, bro. He's like, peace, I'm out. You good. You got it. Like, you know what? The only thing holding you back from being a Jedi Master is you believing that you're good enough to be a Jedi Master. So Which if is you, saying a lot from Yoda. So if you feel like you a Jedi Knight, be that. Who am I to tell you that you're not? You got it? Do what you do. Because he already so knows that you're your like problem. stupid, strong in the Force. You go to this tree, and if you come back from the tree and everything's all good, you got it. You good. Now, he then goes and he's on indoor Ewoks. He's like trying to do so. They get wrapped up in the little thing and, you know, he floats uh, C-3PO across. You know what I'm saying? He's done some stuff. Like he's got some capabilities. And then he basically just phones his dad through the forest. He's like, hey, hey, pick me up. Everything I've done here is done. I don't need to help. Pick right. me up. <laughs> now, he is, and this is according to Legends Canon, the strongest Force user ever. Yep, Legends, he is number one. Grandmaster Luke is on a power scaling that literally only Dark Empire Sidious can even be close. Well, Dark Empire League is also pretty up there. There's a lot. There's a lot of semantics between books, and because certain books are like s- the first one versus the third one, and character growth and all that. That's a whole lot of thinking. It's like Superman wasn't just Superman day one. He's been expanded upon power wise and power no, set wise, no, I'm, and I'm intelligence over time. I get that, but I just wanted to. I just want to clarify that when it's all said and done, Luke was that dude. Luke is the strongest force user in existence. Both canon and not. Okay, I accept that. I'm not disputing that fact. Because Sidious is the obvious one A to that one because he's dark side. And I mean, this whole lightning maelstrom he summoned in the last Skywalker was OP as shit. Oh, yeah. Because he's literally dying and he's like, hey, guess what I can do? Lightning Symphony, like it was straight out of a Metallica album but, cover. But art. even that is still like because it's dark side power, and he 
because he only focused on dark side power, and we know at the very least Luke learned both darks, excuse me, dark side and light side. In Legends, yes, right, no, and I'm because at I'm, Legends at one point he's evil. I'm I'm including this he's at this Palpatine's point. Palpatine's like. I am no no no. And for this argument, for this argument at this moment, I am including that. When I say Luke is the most powerful Force user, I am saying you said canon and non-canon. He is the most powerful Force user. Grandmaster Luke. I am not disagreeing with that statement at all. But your argument is that he is not a Gary Stu. I just want to clarify. Is that your argument? He is not a Gary Stu. He should not be. Okay. I accept that. Should not be. Should not be. So let's talk about my girl, Ray. Oh, boy. We recircled. We're doing this two videos in a row. We don't have to. No, not hit me. You have your argument ready. I really actually want to hear it. So I do enjoy debating with you because we both respectfully make counterpoints so it's it's because if i'm wrong you will let me know and if i can at least shed some if i can show you a perception or a perspective that you have not looked at before then you can see and you can at least justify or understand why the community or why certain people feel a certain way about it and i think this is one of those things where the conversation really comes down to canon versus non-canon and it's one of those things where like okay you know what whenever we have a conversation about dragon ball z or excuse me i won't even say dragon ball z whenever we have a conversation about dragon ball i include gt because i watched it if you watch it it has to be real I mean, you know, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and if you read the books, I can't discredit the books. It was also in Xenoverse 2, so I'm just saying they included in the video game that there you should go. be thing. There you go. And that is and that is my point. So when it comes to the conversation about Luke versus Ray, it comes down to if you just base the conversation of The Force Awakens to A New Hope, these characters are the same. There is nothing more that's been done here that was done there. And everything that Ray did in The Force Awakens has a justifiable explanation in movie. And a lot of times people want to discredit that simply because I don't know if it's they don't like the character because they don't like the way she ended up. I don't like the character. I will say that on record. I absolutely abhor the character. And, Finn should have been the Jedi. That was it. That was and, my and biggest I, gripe. And I'm with you 100%. And in the end result, you know, I don't like the character because I don't like the way they ended her character because who she ended up being versus who she should have been. But I digress. That does not make her a Mary Sue because I don't like her. What would make her a Mary Sue is unexplainable feats of just ungodly power. And I don't feel that there are any unexplainable feats of ungodly power. Not in The Force Awakens. The Force Lightning is definitely unexplainable. Knowing how to Force Heal is also unexplainable because no one's ever done it. What movie did that? Wait, 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 wait. What movie did that take place in? That is the very last one. That is the last okay. Skywalker. I know so, per your argument, it is only no, Force no, no. Awakens, not but I can my explain argument that. over here. I can explain that. I can explain that. Who taught her Force Lightning? What does she have that no other Jedi has? I'm waiting. Like the last name Palpatine, is that like the big difference? Are you are you ready? Are you ready? Hit me. The sacred texts. There were sacred Jedi texts that were burnt. She never read them. The sacred how do you wait 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 wait? It wasn't wait. shown on the movie. No. Don't you can't start this argument well, otherwise. She never oh, read them. Hold on. Cinematically not shown, therefore, doesn't How do we, count. You know what? You are trying to make a logical inference that was not shown on camera. I am making the same logical inference that was made with Luke. So then we're both at a draw because we just counterpoint hold on, hold on. each other. Because, because, and but here's the difference. they were the sacred difference. Jedi texts. They weren't sacred Sith texts. 
but hold on, but check this out. This technique, Jedi would not have taught that, would not have had it written down. They wouldn't have archived it. It would be nowhere in their text. And Force Lightning, I'm not excusing Force Lightning. Because that is the feat she cannot be, that cannot be explained. She just, boom, blows it up. You, know, you, know, you want to know how they explain Force Lightning? Her last name is Palpatine. Yeah. That is, that is literally. got pissed off her last name Palpatine. It's not, that's not an explainable thing, though. It shouldn't be just because your last name's this, you can do this. Just because someone's last name is not Jordan doesn't mean they can be the best basketball player this that planet's is a ever high seen. High M count. That is that is the only thing that is explainable for that. And I'm not justifying it. I am simply saying, as far as everyone inquiring about, and honestly, I don't feel like because you know what, Yoda didn't seem to really be shocked by Force Lightning. He's been around forever. He was a couple hundred years old, and he, he, all he knew how to do with Force Lightning was catch it, send it back. It wasn't like he was using it. He just bounced it back. He's like, all right, cool, deflection. And actually, he didn't even deflect it. He grabbed it, sucked it up, and just, like, canceled it. I thought he threw it back. I'll have to rewatch Revenge of the Sith. I, won't, I, won't, I don't want it to be in a gray area. That's a weird semantical point to try. And, that, and, that's, and that's fine. But the point is, and this is something that a lot of people forget. Okay, so we agree that Luke... On camera, appears to be self-taught from between five and six. Okay, okay, I can, I can concede that it has to be self-taught. There's no definitive cinematic so, evidence to go off of. So, in Force Awakens, she has very, very minimal. Like, in fact, I will say she has no force training. She literally saw Kylo do it, and she's like, well, maybe I can do this. That is the basis of the argument. Kylo indicated that she was strong. He well, told he her. He couldn't, he couldn't get through her mind. No, but he told her. Before that? I feel like that's a horrible interrogation tactic, No, no, no. That, yeah, right, that whole, no, that whole conversation where he's trying to, like, get her to join him and that kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Then he's trying to read her mind, and that backfires, and she ends up reading his mind. So now she has perhaps all of this insight and this knowledge that she didn't really know she had before because she just kind of accidentally read his mind and saw some stuff she wasn't supposed to see, and boom. He heads out, and she decides she's going to try this thing. And all she does is she tries to tell one stormtrooper. And you see what she did? She like... <sighs> Failed at first, got it the second time. And which is like, so impressive. Because, I mean, Ahsoka like, went through the whole Clone Wars trying to figure out how to do it. Never got it done. She took a deep breath. But she, Ahsoka probably doesn't have the same M count. And why you, why you, you turn your nose up at that statement, I think... Honestly, the whole point of them talking about the M count is that it makes a difference. That's why Grogu is important the way he's important because he has a high M count. Like ultimately, there are people who are stronger in the Force than others. You have Force. Because Ahsoka literally did say that he's more powerful in the Force than I am, which is like, excuse the fuck out of me. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying, and I mean stuff like that ultimately kind of makes a little bit of a difference. So she does very, very minimal. And the only other thing we really see her do, in fact, the only two things we see her do with the force is a she convinces a stormtrooper to unleash her shackles and drop his gun. Shout out to does, Daniel Craig. And she does a force pull for a lightsaber. In that movie, yes. Those are the only two force feats. And then as she is fighting Kylo Ren, she is like looking like trash with the lightsaber. She has it in her hand, but she looks horrible with it. She is just like, eh, 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 basically trying to stick it because that's all she knows is that it's hot, it's sharp, and it cuts things, and I'm going to poke like you with it. Like, just start stabbing. Right. So if I poke you with it, that'll be a thing. Then she kind of, like, takes a deep breath, and, you know, she, like, somehow tunes into the force a little bit. She doesn't do anything special, but she finds herself in the right place at the right time, and the ground opens up, and voila, she's free. Boom. She moves on. She saves Finn. Nothing she did. She didn't have to physically do anything. So when you say that she beat this... No, she didn't beat Kylo. Like, it wasn't The Earth like, literally ruptured between them. They were separated, and neither one was just going to try and 
force jump that. They were and like, if you think about yeah. it, for everybody that wanted to have a problem with what she did, you think about how arrogant and reckless Kylo was. Finn got a hit on him. Because Kylo was just pure rage amplified. There was no skill or tactic. He was just, I'm going to beat the hell out of you. Finn got a hit on him. Did he not? No, he did. He got a good one, too, because it was a straight laceration on the face. So that right there just goes to show you that when you say she beat a trained Sith, you mean the same dude that Finn cut? That's who you compare? That's what you're basing her beating a Sith Lord? Like that's no, I, I meant Sith Lord in terms of Palpatine, and that was like for plot sake. That was, okay, that was, so that had to if be we're talking was. about Palpatine, and, and I get that, and I'm not disputing that. When you take the end of that movie and you get to the end of The Last, last Jedi. No, 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 not even going to Skywalker. If you get to the okay. end of The Last Jedi, at this point, she's at least had some time with Luke. Yeah, he begrudgingly gave it to her because they burned the sacred text in that book. She well, at that least movie. had some time with Luke. Yoda came and like burned a tree down and was like, y'all is on the wrong path. What is y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? She got a little bit of training with the lightsaber. He sent her down into like, you know. Whatever that was, the reflecting pool? I, I don't know. Right. Basically, don't know what it, was it, was, it was the equivalent of the tree that he went into when he saw himself. It was the same kind of thing. Like, you have to be tempted by the dark sides. I need to know that you're clean and that you can handle this and that you're good. Yeah, he I thought it was like a Lord of the Rings homage for a moment. Like, when Frodo has to look into the pool of water with Galadriel and all that. Right. And then he's, like, tempted to be, you know, the Ooh. exact opposite of that. And I was like, that you know was what? the only I parallel really, I could call it that. You know what? I never really paid much attention to that aspect of it. I always looked at it as being similar to the tree because it was just like you have to be tested by the dark side and see how you come out on the other side. And remember, he was like, you know, I've only seen power like this one time before, and it scared the hell out of me. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? So it's like clearly – that's another one of those moments where it's like indicating that she's just really like she is ridiculously strong in the force. Like it's not like we're talking about everybody saying Your like average some, Jedi Knight. You're, but right. you're like, this you know what I'm like saying? Like one of the, this if Luke's is, acknowledging you as strong, this you is are one of those people. Strong. You know what? Her power level is over 9,000. Y'all talking like it's Krillin. It's not Krillin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's super Saiyan. She's Super Saiyan. We don't know that she's Super Saiyan, but she's Super Saiyan. Her power level can go way to hell up. And y'all are acting like she over here looking like Yamcha. Stop. Stop. It oh, is these argument if she never died, like this, like, but then literally everybody in Dragon Ball Z has died. True. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, and, and that's why I say the last little bit there, you know what I'm saying? When you get to the end of The Last Jedi, you know what I'm saying? And she like she has all the rocks in front of her moved and she frees everybody and everybody escapes and da 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 da. And then there's that scene in uh The Rise of Skywalker where we see her like adjust the like she's in the Falcon and she like moves something and we can see the books. We see that she actually kept the sacred text. Do you re- do you recall that? I'll have to watch that movie against okay. my will. I know. Just and it's 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 towards the beginning. I will. Let, matter of fact, let me just see if I can like pull that up real real quick, just so maybe you don't even have to watch it. Um, right now, I'll end up watching it. I mean, it's only one a.m. my time. I'm gonna be up a couple more hours. Like we're good, good. I'm not really uh, worried about that particular aspect of it. I will say her force feats for. The last Skywalker were ridiculous. She jumps over a TIE fighter, slashes it with her lightsaber, and takes it down. That alone is nuts. You add force lightning, not well, you add force healing, not even five, ten minutes later. And then on top of that, you add force lightning like 30 minutes later. What in the absolute fuck is going on with that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Yoda initially does like the whole 
Force Ghost Yoda burns the tree. Luke front Luke like loses his shit for a hot second. Until he realizes probably who did it. He's like, oh, wait, if you did it, there's gotta be a reason. He then tells Luke Ray has everything she needs to know. At the end of that movie, Finn is going through a locker on the Millennium Falcon, and we see that Ray has taken the Force text from the island. The ancient books are safe in her possession, not burned in the temple, as Luke believes, which means the Jedi Order will not die with him. The reveal is made shortly after Luke tells Kylo Ren that he is not the last Jedi and that there will be more to come after he is gone. Luke believes in Rey and the power of the light side of the Force to prevail. Despite the fact that they're a boring read, Rey possessing the text will presumably help her make wise choices. Even without a Jedi Master to train her, though we're still sure that Luke will make appearances from the other side. So. She Why has do they a, save them? They've had these texts forever and they always lose. She has the basis to of the Force. Them. She has the basis of... That is no different, in my opinion, that is no different than Luke going to Dagobah, leaving his training early to go save his friends, because Ray leaves her training early to go save her friends. The exact same thing. Nothing With changed. her boyfriend. <laughs> her weird... Some probably somehow family relation boyfriend. Because <laughs> Star Wars is trippy like that. Star Wars and Game of Thrones don't know how to get, act right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Something's off with that. But that there again, it's just one of those things like, you know what I'm saying? It's it's there, it's visible. And since she has at least that baseline, like everybody agrees that she at least got a little bit of training from Luke. Yeah. She it was shown got, in the movie. There's not there's nothing you can dispute about it. So that little bit of training she got from Luke. And then she, Leia. Right, because in the beginning of the third movie, she's like running around the forest. She throws her lightsaber. She stops. She catches it. She defeats a little targeting ball. You know what I'm saying? So she has like some basis of training. You take that combined with her having access to the sacred text, which is like the foundation of the Jedi Order. She got to read the original information. She got to read what Yoda studied. Yoda probably wrote the damn thing. Possibly. Now, I'm not saying that gives her access to Force Lightning, but that probably allowed her to tap into a certain thing because every time she starts to get a little anxious, you see her, she kind of like... And then she does her thing, just like you were talking when she jumps over Kylo Ren's ship. And first of all, why was Kylo Ren out there like a like a douche? Like, really, dude? I need you to do better. You really coming up short as a Sith Lord. Like he was no, okay. He's a Sith joke. <laughs> There's nothing about that character that I'll ever be like. That is Sith. He is just dark side trash. Okay, I won't. I won't even say he's trash because he. Did I some love shit Adam Driver. Seen. No, 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 no. I, I I'm gonna tell don't you love that role. Kylo him. Ren in the Force Awakens when he looks back, stops that like nobody. The best we had before that was when Vader like reflected some bolts, but he didn't just stop him in midair like that. Yeah, because Han shot at him uh, after Vader made that beautiful block, family block, dinner block, and just no. and then pulls the gun. Yeah, Kylo like, Ren I, was just like no. And like, I'm not dealing move. with this. Let me finish my interrogation. Right. We'll and it with didn't you, move. And then then I'll move. And Absolutely. he finished the entire conversation with Poe. And then he started to walk off. He looked over at Finn. And then when he was done with that little moment with Finn and he starts to walk off, that's when the blaster bolt finally went through. I am not going to take away from Kylo Ren his capability and what he could have brought to the table. Unfortunately, so, that was his only feat. Throughout three movies, no, because he read minds and he pulled that information out of Poe. He attempted to read a mind. No, he of... pulled that information out of Poe. Okay, so knew, that's one other. He knew that that information was on the droid, um, and he... if you're going to count the deception of Snoke, I mean that's uh, the deception so... of Snoke. No, but I will say, like the turning of the lightsaber and having it in that battle, 
that was that was pretty badass. And I mean, the boy was good with his lightsaber. Like he could fight. Don't don't take that away from him. Oh, he, he could fight. He, he, yeah, the hands. But like when it came to like force feats, it was like I expected more from someone who is a direct descendant of Darth Vader. Like you act you like we just, you act daddy. like we just saw some really stupid force powers from Anakin. We, saw yeah. saw uh, saw. Not not that we know existed. Saw. Right. Damn you. Right. Well played. Because, I mean, literally, the only thing he has is when he taps into the Force to become one with it to kill Dooku. Because Dooku was a far better duelist. There you go. Okay. So, I think we have nitpicked this. Also, shout out to Christopher Lee. To a T. May he rest in peace. Oh, yeah. Christopher Lee is such a good Count Dooku. He was was such a a great actor. His lightsaber form of Makashi. He got oh, his yeah. own one as well. I loved his the the design of his lightsabers was fantastic because it was literally bent, bent, and then and he would just hold it like a badass. He held it with such authority and poise, Grace. like a master fencer. Yes, and, but he was literally powerful and quick with everything he's doing. And considering all the stunts he did by himself at his age, you just. You can't not be blown away by what Christopher Lee did during the 2000s, let alone all of his pieces he did before that, where he was even a damn Bond villain. But, In a real well, life we already spot. talked about Rushmore, so, you know, I had Christopher Lee up there, so I have fanboying sufficiently. Yeah, 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 I'll, yeah. He, I'll put that in the bud. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did really, 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 really well. And I think he made for a great, great villain in Dooku. And he brought that character to life so very well when that could have been just a throwaway character altogether just to like move some plot. But he actually brought some life and showed up really well in the Clone War series. Um, Because him versus the Night Sisters, him versus the Vash, him versus... He never went against Maul, did he? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like they, They really brought some life to that character and I think they did a great job. Um... I don't have anything else to add on. Cal um, Kestis, Ezra Bridger, those are my votes for Grogu. Kyle Katarn, give me an outcast. I'm, I'm, I don't, I have no problem with Cal Katarn. Cal um, Kestis would be great, though, to see that they do include the video games as canon. I mean, even if they bring, even if they bring Cal Katarn, that's still including the video games as canon because he is. Most said people the Force are... Awakens is the one they will not have as canon, which pisses me off because Star Killer literally pulled down a Star Destroyer with his bare fucking. Oh, hands. Force Force Unleashed. Mm-hmm. They literally. See, that one and that nothing. one, I think it would make sense if he pulled down the Star Destroyer on Jakku. That'd be badass. That would make sense for there to be a Star Destroyer on Jakku. There was a battle on Jakku, that happened after the battle of um, Endor. There were several other battles after that, but that was the definitive blow to the Empire's power. Gotcha. Like how we see in Mandalorian, they are still remnants of the Empire, and they still do have some sway in things, but they aren't wielding their Imperial dicks like they used to be, just swinging around the whole galaxy, smacking people. They ain't doing that anymore. they got to be more covert. (sighs) Okay, so this has been... Star Wars talk. Gag after dark. <laughs> Gag after dark. We are talking Star Wars. We have we have dived into some Mandalorian. We have talked about canon versus non-canon. We have tried to bring you up to speed on Legends and what is canon. Some movie content. Uh, some Force feats and who has some of the greatest Force feats. We've even thrown in a little bit of the video game lore just to show you how they could move forward from here. Um, They've done a lot of great things with The Mandalorian. It would be fantastic if they continued that trend and did more great things with The Mandalorian. And one of the great things they could do would bring in Cal Kestin or Cal Katarn. If they bring in either one of those characters, that would just be... Samuel L. has a long shot. (laughs) Fantastic. And you know what? I would even go with Sebastian Stan as Luke Skywalker over Samuel L. Jackson simply because 
it would not make like the idea being that if they bring in Samuel L. Jackson, is he going to be there to train Grogu or is he going to be the one that saved Grogu? Because there's a big question that's out there as far as who actually saved Grogu. I believe he did not require saving as he was already hidden away. Um, I think the fact that he is, he was raised in the Jedi temple, but he is only the third creature of the same species. Yoda, Yaddle, Yoda. Grogu. I mean, this seems pretty self-explanatory to me right yeah. there. Just three. I mean, there were some green monster mash. I don't know what to call it. There's I mean, something. I, There's some I feel conflict. like I feel like Yaddle was on the council, and then Yaddle wasn't heard from again, and now all of a sudden we got Grogu. Because she did get changed up between Phantom Menace you, and Attack of the Clones. If you do the math, the timeline fits. Unfortunately, it fits like literally seamlessly. There's nothing that can't be added as an addendum to that. So maybe Yaddle is not. Maybe Yoda. Maybe Baby Yoda is really accurate because he's really Junior. I oh, I don't know if I want to call him Junior. I mean, Baby Yoda works as well because either way, he's Yoda's kid. <gasps> yeah. Yoda Junior. No. Yep. Baby Yoda. Yep. Sticking with it. I even take Grogu over Junior. I mean, if we said baby Brent, clearly we're talking about your kid. <sighs> She's got my attitude, but she looks just like her mom. Well, if we called her by her mama's name and called her baby that, that would, you know. That'd be a thing, yeah. But I th- it's it's uh, Kyrie, right? Yep, Kyrie from Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, see, so I mean, just as a name, Kyrie is a fantastic name. I don't know how the fried chicken turned out. I guess you'll let me know since you are all the way into it. Um, At 4 a.m. fried chicken time. But Damn it. it is. You're on. He's very passionate about his chicken. He's very passionate about his chicken. His chicken is chicken is life, you know. It's Jedi I'm fuel. not going to argue that. It's delicious. <laughs> it's I've had Jedi. some of your cooking. I'm not going to argue Jedi with shit. <laughs> yeah. But, um. Yeah, so I mean that that raises a whole new question. That's something. So I am looking forward to see how they explain that out. There I is. I prefer they just left it alone. It it would be fine. I don't need I to just, know about Master Yoda getting his freak out. I guess my only concern then is like, if this is only the third time we've seen, how do you feel about Grogu being a clone of Yoda? I'm okay with that actually. I feel like that's better. I don't know how they would have obtained said DNA. That would be my biggest question, unless they literally killed Yaddle, took the DNA from her. Oh, holy shit, that would fit. That would, that fit. would explain her disappearance. It oh, would damn. also, I think it would also fit when you look at Palpatine, who obviously had a long term plan set up from the jump. Um, when he fights Yoda, Yoda falls, hits the ground. There could be some blood. He could like, swipe up a little bit of that blood and begin his experiments when Yoda goes. Because honestly, after the fight with Sidious, Yoda basically goes into hiding after that. Yeah, because Yoda's like, fuck this, I'm out. I can't do this. Which so, is kind of a weak move, but whatever. That's that's a whole different... It's a whole different but thing. once once you realize the battle is lost, there's a difference between an intelligent retreat and just throwing your life away. Well, he threw his life away because he just stayed in the damn swamp. If Luke never showed up, no, he just they threw are, away the see, whole he, Jedi line, lineage from there. But he knew Luke was alive because keep in mind that... Yeah, he, he showed had, up in Revenge of the Sith. Yep, him and Obi-Wan were there. They knew who was doing what. So, Like, he knew that Obi-Wan was hiding Luke on this planet, and he knew that Leia was going over there. Yeah. So he knew that there was a chance. So he's like, 18 years, I'm just going to do me. And then... Kids show up one day. Oh, hey, what's up? You know, I would have liked for him to have a little bit more recognition of him, but I guess he slowly went crazy while he was in the in the swamp by himself. I mean, considering what Baby Yoda's diet is and what Yoda is, like Yoda probably <laughs> frogs, ate everything. Frogs on that themselves place. and frog eggs, apparently. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I think that that is uh, 
That is all the points that I needed to cover. Was there anything else you needed to touch on before we go? I love John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Their directing is flawless. I second that. I don't that. have anything else to say. I second that. They have done a fantastic job. And The Mandalorian is, without a doubt, one of my favorite series on television right now. Um, we are in season two. We are up to the episode, The Tragedy. Eagerly looking forward to what's next. Uh, real quick, just to have an official, we said it. What is your prediction? Who is going to be the Jedi that responds to Grogu? Not what you want, but who you actually think it's going to be. Who I actually think it's going to be, knowing the directors, it's going to be Ezra. All right. So we agree on that point. I would love for it to be someone else, but I think the way the story is setting up, the whole conversation with Thrawn, I believe they are going to go with Ezra. Dave Filoni has too much involvement in Rebels to not follow that up and continue down that path. Because it also allows him to bring in other Mandalorians. It allows him to bring in, uh, you know, keep bringing uh, Shokatano back in. And she could get a second or third episode. I just feel like they can do too much if they bring Ezra Bridger. And to do anything else now becomes something else you have to explain. And though it may provide a little bit of fan service, it won't have the same link as... Al Kestis or Kyle Katarn. Those would be good. Like, honestly, even bringing in Ezra Bridger is still a little bit of fan service. But you have... I would have loved for uh, the actor who played Poe Dameron to be Ezra, older. Oscar Isaac? Mm-hmm. I feel like he'd be a good 40-year-old Ezra. Uh, I can see with the hair and the dark hair. Uh, uh, yeah. It's actually not too bad a request. I mean, it's impossible because same actor twice. But yeah. I mean, in Star Wars, that doesn't happen. In anything else, maybe, but it would be it'd be a little off. Um, I will say that I am very much against it being Luke. Um, Leave him alone. We're done with the Skywalker. As much as I would love to see Sebastian Stan come in and play Luke, I don't think we need to see Luke in The Mandalorian. They can have his own miniseries, do something else. They've done a very good job up to this point of only giving us the most... Ahsoka Tano was the first time we've had a Jedi. We are in the second, we are in the later episodes of second season. If you start focusing on the Jedi and the Jedi stories and the Jedi order and lightsabers, you're going to pull away from what's making your show great. And you're going to start making me want something that you should have to provide given that you haven't done it up to this point and you've done well. So far in the entire series of The Mandalorian, we've had lightsabers one time. And I am good with that one time. You Like, it's there. It was the dark saber, and then it was Ahsoka's lightsaber. See, and That's the it. dark saber has an entirely different connection to Mandalore, so I'm okay with that. I don't really count that the same way. But the lightsabers, they were lightsabers. And just as a result... I've already kind of mentally made an ep- I've already made like another episode and because I saw lightsabers I want more lightsabers and now I've like put lightsabers in that episode and we've done so well not having lightsabers that to start putting lightsabers in is taking us away from what made the show great. That's fair. I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm sure they'll handle that appropriately. So I am kind of wanting them to get back to what was making them work and not lose sight of that. You can so, fanboy a little. Don't, don't fancy. Service like I, I am grateful what they gave me, but pull it back in before that becomes a necessity. Yeah. That's you all. You don't I'm have saying. to wow me every episode. I just need it to be good. So those are all my points. Um, I have nothing else to add. All right, so with that being said, we want to thank you for watching this video. We appreciate you tuning in with us and listen to us rant and rave and talk Star Wars the way we do. Uh, we may just have to continue to do a few more of these like Star Wars behind the scenes where it's just you and me and we sit here and we 
throw ideas back and forth because I know you without a doubt have like so much other Star Wars content that you could talk about. We have the and we're going to do this. We should also include Jeffrey at some point in time because that man knows some stuff. We'll, we'll definitely. I mean, I have no problem bringing on one or two others if we just want to do like our Star Wars behind the scenes. Or we could even do like a couple that that you know what? That could be a whole new series we do behind the scenes where it's just like. It's just the four of us. We talk. We could do DC. We could do Marvel. We could do Star Wars. We could do Harry Potter. We could do Lord of the Rings. We could do any number of the IPs that we love and treasure the way we do and just discuss. Because anytime, we have so many knowledgeable damn geeks in our group. Right. Like, you don't even have to pull admins. Like Literally everyone top to bottom is just yeah, I mean, we brilliant could, and amazing to talk to. We could do a whole like behind the scenes and just do like some D and D, and I could bring on like Alex France, and I could bring on Jeff Miller, I could bring on um, Jeff, and uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but uh, um, Alex's friend, he's the 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 ginger, ginger Jeff. Oh, oh yeah, he's hella cool. He's fun to talk to. Oh yeah, he's he's hilarious. I just don't remember his last name ever too. So I, yeah, I, can't, I can't. my last name's difficult too. So I mean, like unless I've told you my last name more often than not, you look at it and you freeze as soon as you see the M C Z all together. You're just like what? My Those wife actually cool. inquired, "What is the origin of that? Like, what is Polish? It is Polish. Because okay. I'm Irish, German, and Polish. Like, basically, I'm white, white. Like, <laughs> we, we did the whole ancestry thing. There is nothing else other than white. Not Native American. Not nothing else. I'm just plain vanilla white bread that's my ancestry right there cool 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 all right we was, i was curious about that i wanted to know how that worked now we have and I, I do not want you to go back to the queen empty-handed in case we did disturb her slumber for any reason i will apologize immediately oh, no, right no, no, now it's, it's cool let's say give me 10 10 5 okay so we're gonna close that i was looking for have we finished our wrap up i think we have i don't think there's anything else that we need to like it stopped recording address no we have not barker jeff barker barker mischief that is Mis- it's, it's mischief and it's the way he has mischief spell that throws it off but it's jeff mischief barker he he would definitely be good to include on a conversation like this <laughs> But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are Grown A Geeks. We appreciate you being here. Make sure you click the like and subscribe. Um, hit the bell notification so you can know whenever we load our next video. We've got a bunch of great content. Be sure to click the QR code over there in that corner. That'll take you to our Facebook group where you can find all of this wonderful content. If you click QR code above me, that will take you to the link on our YouTube page. We have a lot of videos there. You can actually check out Brent's uh, Grown A Geeks sports channel. Um, that is called Gag on These Balls. I've got a couple of series myself. We've got Admin Chat, where you might find either one of us. We've got our Top 5 series, where we talk about some of the Top 5 movie picks that we have. A um, lot of great content. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation. I do want to say one more time, just for the record, this was actually recorded December 8th, December 9th, well before all of this content comes to fruition. We gave some predictions. We had some Star Wars talk. Hopefully you got enough Star Wars, but if not, enjoy this. Um, that's it for me. I am Sam. That is Brent. We are Grown A Geeks, and we appreciate you being here with us. Join us next time, and we are out of here. Peace.